Well, hello there. Welcome, and thank you for being a part of another one of my streamed classes. Today we're going to be talking about Skype and all the contents of Skype. I've been meeting with a lot of people lately that want to know a little bit more information about Skype, so I thought making a class would be uh, very helpful to us. You want to be sure to be listening for your secret code within this class as part of the Computer Class Pass Incentive Program. You get me that pass and I will get you marked down for taking the class. And once you get 10 of these in, then you'll start winning some prizes. So within this class, we're going to be talking about making video calls, making regular calls, and just using Skype as an overall. So at any time, you can pause this, minimize this, go away from this, and come back to this and pick it up wherever you left off. You're under no obligation to sit through this in one setting, so don't, don't think that you are. Um, all of these have little numbers on them to tell you where you are in the, in the class itself, so you can just write that number down, and then you would be able to uh, pick that up later in that same spot. I'm going to start us off with the um, secret code right now just because last class I made I kind of forgot to put it in there so I don't want to forget this time. So our secret code is I've made video calls and I've been calling on Skype. Give me that secret code and you'll be on your way to prizes. But without further ado I want to welcome you to Skype. Let's say you have a friend. We'll call him Jack, who is somewhere else. He could be in town, cross country, or even overseas, but you need to communicate with him. You could reach him the old-fashioned and expensive way. Phone him, fax him, or mail him something. But if Jack has internet access, you can just use Skype. Skype is a little piece of free software that you download to your PC or Mac. It does a bunch of amazing stuff. You can talk directly to him on Skype, for free, anywhere in the world. Telephone calls sound like this. But Skype calls sound like this. And you can even reach him on this or this if his computer's off, by voice or text at amazing rates. If you want to see him live, Skype does that too. Most new computers have webcams built right in, and Skype gives you free HD video conferencing. Hi, Jack! Skype is also great for working remotely. You can just drag and drop files into Skype and transfer them directly, and securely, and fast. No more email files. Yay! What's really cool, you can screen share, so Jack can sort of look over your shoulder from around the globe. And if you and Jack want to have your own worldwide group call, Skype lets you conference call 25 people at once, even a mix of Skype and phones. Skype works on every computer, and most smartphones, too. With Skype, the Internet becomes your phone, and file transfer, and chat, and video conferencing system for talking and working with people. Your friends and coworkers are now just a click away. Take a deep breath. Think of a friend, like Jack, anywhere in the world. Get Skype and set your conversations free. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the introduction to Skype, and these are the things that we're going to be talking about uh, throughout the entire class. Um, and actually, in this particular section, these are the main things that we are going to be looking at. So, um, first thing we want to know is, what is Skype? Skype might be the answer to a lot of things that you've always wanted but didn't know were possible. A way to talk to your family members is different parts of the country for free. A way to call people abroad or on their phones or cell phones for less money. And a way to be there for important life events when you can't be there in person. In a nutshell, Skype is a service that lets you call other Skype users anywhere in the world and talk to them for free. You can even talk to each other um, live or over video. So how does it work? All of this is possible through a technology called Voice over IP, or VoIP. VoIP is a method of transmitting the human voice over internet protocol networks, which is an IP network. Skype users' VoIP 
uses VoIP to um, let you make phone calls, video calls, group calls, and more over the internet instead of using traditional phone lines. So um, you saw the video before this before this section, and it kind of showed you a way around um, how it works and things along those lines. Um, now that you know how Skype works, you can check out a complete list of features broken down by service. Many features are free, but some cost money, ranging from a few cents per minute to several dollars per month. And we're going to actually go over that um, in the next section, the features and services and what you're going to be getting. But I wanted to give you just kind of a general on that. And then there's ways to pay. Skype's most popular features are free, including basic calling, video, and messaging. If you want something that's included in one of the paid services, payment options vary depending on the features you choose. So you could do a pay-as-you-go. To pay for extra features as you go, you'll need to purchase something called Skype Credit for your account. Skype Credit is how you pay for anything on Skype that's not part of the subscription. It's similar to buying tokens or changing up your metro card so you can ride the subway. So um, you would want to get Skype credit. You can also get a subscription. You can purchase a regular subscri subscription that lasts one month, three months, or 12 months. Um, when it expires, Skype will renew it automatically using the payment method you have on file. You can still cancel your subscription at any time. Um, so just keep in mind about those Skype rates. Skype accepts Visa, MasterCard, um, PayPal and money bookers. So in the next slide we are going to be talking about some of those features and services. So that you have a better understanding about Skype and the features and services I figured that we would just kind of go through this together. Now for free on Skype you get Skype's most popular features for free including calling, video, and messaging. And I have my chart laid out for you here. So you can see that our free option goes along with the free calls and groups, uh, calls to anyone using Skype. Uh, you can do free video calls with your webcam to anyone who uses Skype. Free screen sharing, so for example, computer desktop. You also get the free instant messenger, free file sharing, and the ability to view and interact with your Facebook friends on Skype. All of that is free. Now the pay as you go, uh, you would pay extra for features individually if and when you need them. So the pay as you go, um, you could get low cost calls for other phones and mobile devices, low cost international calls from your phone or mobile device. Um, it looks like you'd get the free video calling, the free screen sharing, also the free IM, free file sharing. Uh, the ability to view and interact with your Facebook friends, and you would also get text messages from Skype to your cell phone and other mobile devices. So that's the pay as you go. You could get a subscription, get the most features at the best rates with a monthly subscription, and the subscription gives you all the free calls. You are also going to get the low-cost calls on other phones and mobile devices. You would get the low-cost international calls from your phone or mobile device. With this one, you get your own number that anyone can call and reach you with. Uh, you get the free video calling, the free screen sharing. You also get the free IM, the free file sharing, and the ability to view and interact with your Facebook friends. Uh, Pay as you go is the only one that lets you do the text messages from Skype. And then you've got Skype Premium. Uh, make group video calls with a day pass or subscription to Skype Premium. Skype Premium is going to give you those free calls. It's also going to give you the low cost um, for other phones as well as international. Uh, you're going to get the free video calls, the free screen sharing. Added to this, you're going to get the group video calls and anyone using Skype. Um, again, you're going to get the free IM, free file sharing, and the ability to view and interact with your Facebook friends. So you would just need to decide which service would be right for you. The pay-as-you-go, as you can see, many of the Skype's features are free. If you occasionally want to do more with your account, for example, call a friend's cell phone, you can buy Skype credit to pay for these uh, things as you go. The subscription, it costs money to call other phones from Skype, so if you plan to use Skype more, Often in place of your ordinary phone and or pay for your own Skype number, you can get better rates with a monthly subscription. 
And then you have the Skype Premium. It's a one-on-one -on -one video calls with Skype that are free. If you want to make group video calls, for example, business associates or um, with your whole family at once, Skype Premium lets you do this with up to 10 people at a time. So um, this is all about the features and services that Skype has to offer. And I figured we would just kind of go through those together. You can visit Skype.com for the different pricing that is available for that and what might best suit your needs. So um, if you haven't had the chance, go ahead right now, get into your um, computer and get on Skype.com uh, because we're going to be using it from here on out throughout the class anyways. So how are things in Bighorn, Grandma? Back in the old days, you used to have to pick up the phone, call long distance, and pay by the minute if you wanted to talk to Grandma in Wyoming. I gotta go, Grandma. You hang up. No, you hang up first. Now, with Skype, you can call anyone in the world for free. You can even talk to each other live over video. All you need is a computer and internet access. Hi, I'm Bronwyn. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up your computer for Skype. We'll also take a look at a couple different equipment options. To get started, you'll need a computer or a laptop, a high-speed internet connection like cable or DSL, speakers and a microphone or a separate headset, and finally, a webcam if you want to make video calls. You might find these features already built into your computer. It depends on the type of computer you have, for example, a laptop, PC, or Mac, and how old it is. Let's take a closer look. Like most new laptops, this one has everything you need to make calls on Skype. Some of the features might be hard to find at first because they're designed to blend in. For example, we have a pair of speakers hidden under here. And this tiny little pinhole is actually a powerful microphone. This laptop also has a built-in webcam. To find out if yours has one, look for a small dot above your screen or computer monitor. It may have a lens cover like this one, or it may be flat, which will make it harder to see. If you don't have these features built into your computer, don't worry. Now I'm going to show you how to attach a separate webcam and a separate headset. Many people on Skype prefer to use a separate headset when making calls because you can hear each other much more clearly that way. They're also fairly inexpensive. This headset attaches to your computer via USB, so all you have to do is plug it in and you can use it with Skype. You should find at least two USB ports on your computer, wherever the internal components are housed. In this example, they're on the tower. Now I'm going to set up my webcam. It also attaches via USB, so I'm just going to plug it into the second port. See how it works? Place the webcam on top of the monitor and make sure it's secure. You'll also want to install any software that came with the webcam if you haven't done that already. That about covers it. Remember, you need a computer with internet access, speakers and a microphone or a separate headset, and a webcam if you want to make video calls. Once your computer is set up, you can download Skype, create an account, and call anyone, anywhere in the world for free. Like what you just saw? Rate it. Add a comment. Subscribe to our channel. The freedom to learn. What you want, when you want. Absolutely free. GCFLearnFree.org you may already have everything you need to use Skype on your computer. Um, having a few extra items like a comfortable headset can make things easier. Before you download Skype, it's a good idea to learn about the different equipment options and ensure that your computer is set up correctly. So we're just going to kind of go over this little equipment checklist real quick, making sure that um, you're all set up. We saw the video prior to this that showed us how to set up for Skype and what we can do. But here I want to kind of go over the checklist itself. High-speed internet connection. Um, this can be a DSL, a satellite, or even a cable modem. A dial-up connection is okay for instant messaging on Skype, but it isn't enough for a voice or a video call. So you definitely need to get something that has a very high-speed internet. Speakers. Um, and a microphone. We are going to um, combo that together. 
Uh, some people like to use headphones or even a full headset so they can hear and talk to other persons more clearly. Uh, sometimes your computer may have a um, built-in speaker and microphone, so you would just need to make sure um, what you have. If you don't, you can buy an external speaker. You could buy a headset that has the microphone and your speakers. However, you need to do that. And if you have more questions about that, you can get in contact with me here at the library, and I can help you get yourself going. Um, you definitely need a webcam if you want to make video calls. So many new computers even come built in with webcams. If your computer doesn't have one, you can buy one online or in stores. Um, and right now, honestly, because they've just been around for so long, they really are cheap. They're not very expensive. You can get one for as little as probably 20 bucks, maybe even less than that. There are other accessories you may want to consider, like an actual phone. Uh, you can plug into your computer or use wirelessly to talk to people on Skype. These accessories can be expensive, but they are a good investment for some who, especially if you plan on plan to get your own Skype number and use it frequently in place of your ordinary phone. So that's telling you about um, the Skype number and things along those lines. Now the Windows versus the Mac. Uh, these are two different versions of Skype depending on the type of computer you have. Skype for Windows and Skype for Mac. Um, so for the Skype for Windows is kind of what I'm focusing on right now because that's what I have. Um, the feature in each versions are most likely the same. Once you get to know the Windows version, version and the Mac interface, um, then you're going to be able to follow along and participate in all the things that that we talk about in class. So it's just a matter of getting yourself familiar with um, with that with the Windows or the Mac. So whether you have a Mac or a Windows, it's just getting yourself familiar is all it is. So this is just your little equipment checklist to make sure that you have everything you're going to need to get yourself going on Skype. Goodwill Community Foundation, creating opportunities for a better life. Setting up Skype for the first time is easy. All you have to do is go to Skype.com, then click Join Us in the upper right corner. Skype asks for all the things you're used to filling out when you sign up for something online, including your first name, last name, and your email address. Some of the information is optional, like entering your birthday or gender in the next part of the form. Anything you enter here will be part of your public profile, so if you don't feel comfortable sharing it, leave it blank. The only fields that are required are the ones marked with an asterisk, like country and language. Now it's time to pick out a username, which is one of the ways your friends and family will be able to find you on Skype. If you're not sure what to pick, check out the suggestions or try some other variation on your name. You'll also need a good, strong password, one that's easy for you to remember but hard for other people to guess. Avoid using really obvious passwords like your name, predictable patterns, or the word password. The more random a password is, the better. When you're ready, scroll down and type the security text you see in the box. This is to confirm you're a real person, not a computer set up for spamming. Finally, review the terms of use if you're not familiar with them already. Then click I agree, continue. Congratulations! Now you have a Skype account. The next step is to download the software you need so you can install Skype on your computer. All you have to do is click the download button, then save file. When the file is finished downloading, go ahead and open it. Depending on your browser settings, you might find it on your desktop or, like me, in your downloads folder. Now Skype is going to walk you through the rest of the process. Start by clicking I agree, next. Here you can install a tool that lets you make Skype calls right from your browser. It works anytime you see a phone number online, for example on a company website. To install the tool, leave the box checked. Then click the Continue button. 
Next, Skype will offer to make changes to your default search engine and your browser's home page. If you don't want to make these changes, don't worry, you can opt out of them. Just uncheck both boxes, then click Continue. Now we just have to wait for it to finish. Depending on how fast your computer is, this part may take a few minutes. When the installation is done, the window will close automatically and launch Skype for the first time. Remember your username and password? Enter them here, then click the Sign In button. Now Skype is going to walk you through setting up your account. Click Continue to move on to the next step. Here you can adjust your speakers, microphone, and video settings. All the things you need to make calls once you actually start using Skype. When you're satisfied, go ahead and click Continue. Here you can upload a profile picture. Feel free to do this now, or if you prefer to choose a picture later, click the Add Later button. Finally, click Start Using Skype, and you're all set. Now you can get to know the program, add some contacts, and start getting ready to make your first call. Now I want to take the time to go through the Skype window. Here you can see that I have an interactive Skype window that I've gotten from gcflearnfree.org. Um, fantastic site. I highly recommend them. So if you get some time, go ahead and just do uh, www.gcflearnfree.org, all one, all one. And uh, they've got tons of technology classes on there. I use them for a lot of my materials. And uh, I would just praise them all day long if I could. Uh, but without we're um, getting us back on track here, we're going to get into the Skype window. So I'm just going to kind of go through these in order. Um, this is the Skype menu bar, and it lets you change, th change things related to you and your account. Uh, even your online status, so people can tell when you're available. Uh, this is also where you can sign out of Skype. So that's where you'd find that up there. Um, these are your contacts. The contacts menu includes shortcuts for managing your contacts. Some common tasks include importing contacts, changing how your contacts are sorted in the Skype window. So you can actually see them all kind of listed here and what your different options are going to be to you in that area. A conversation, you would click here for shortcuts on everything related to conversation on Skype. So in other words, it's an instant messaging. It opens range from viewing old messages to setting up special notifications based on contents of the message. So you can see here, um, that's your conversation tab. And now we're going to look at the call tab. The call man, uh, menu gathers all of your calling actions in one place. If you're not sure how to do something on a call, just come here to gain access to things like mute, transfer, and ignore with a single click. So you can see them all listed there for you. Now we're going to look at view. Use the view menu to quickly navigate to anything you're not currently viewing, such as your profile, voicemail messages, and files that you have sent or received. So that would be in your view pane. Uh, then you've got your tools. You're going to open the tools menu to access online games and settings for your Skype account. You'll probably use options, the, um, the most for configuring things like your audio settings, privacy, and general settings. The help, uh, you can go to the help menu whenever you have a uh, technical question about Skype. Heartbeat is Skype status. Um, can even tell you if Skype is experiencing technical difficulties. So help would be where you would go for that. And that heartbeat Skype status can let you know if there's any other kinds of issues going on. Status and profile tab. This blue bar serves two purposes. Click the small status icon to quickly change your online status or click anywhere else on the bar to view your profile page. The profile page is where you go to edit your profile and control whether certain things are public or visible to your contacts only. So for example, your profile picture. So you can see those items listed there. Skype Home, the Skype Home tab is your general Skype home page. It's the first thing you see when you log in and it's the screen pictured in this interactive. So um, this interactive video that or uh, window that we have right now 
This is actually Skype Home. Here you can easily update your status update, view news and alerts, and easily interact with your top contacts. So then you can go to your contacts. The contacts tab contains your Skype contact list. Here you can click a contact's name to open a pane where you can call him or her, view his or her profile, or see his or her message history. You can also right click a contact's name to quickly access more options. Recent. The recent tab contains a list of your most recent calls. You can right click a contact or group's name to quickly access additional options. So this is where you would go to find those. Um, so this was your overall Skype window. Kind of tells you where you need to go, what direction you need to take, and other options that you have available to you. Why don't you right now go ahead and just take the opportunity to take a look at your Skype interactive window and kind of get yourself around. In many ways, Skype is a social network, just like Facebook or LinkedIn. You have your own profile, notifications, and even a way to protect yourself from unwanted callers by adjusting your privacy settings. It's all part of managing your Skype account. Why don't we take a look at those privacy settings first? Just go to Tools on the menu bar, then choose Options. When the window opens, click Privacy on the left. Most of these settings have to do with who's allowed to contact you on Skype. For example, right now, anyone could call me, but I can easily change that by switching to people in my contacts list only. I'm going to make sure the rest of these settings are the same way, just to be safe. That way, only my contacts will be able to send me video and screen sharing, see that I have a webcam, and chat with me over instant message, also known as IM. Skype keeps a history of your IMs, too, in case you ever need to go back and reference an old conversation. If you're uncomfortable with that, you can always change this setting or clear your history altogether. Finally, we have settings that let you control your internet safety on Skype. For the most privacy, here's what I recommend. Leave the first box unchecked to avoid sharing your online status with people on the web. You should also uncheck the third box to keep Skype from sharing your demographic information with advertisers. The only one that has to stay checked is accept Skype browser cookies, or some features may not work for you. Now that my privacy settings are taken care of, we can move on to notifications. You'll find the link in the same window on the left. Notifications are the things that Skype alerts you to, for example, when someone comes online or wants to add you to their contacts. Notifications are always displayed as a pop-up at the bottom of your screen. Here's an example. I'm not going to change any of these settings because I'm actually happy with the defaults, but it's good to know where they are in case they become a nuisance later. You can also change the sounds that some of the notifications make, for example, a pop for an incoming IM. Just click Sounds in the same window and return here anytime you want to change or disable a sound effect in Skype. The last thing I'd like to show you is how to edit your profile and upload a picture. But first, we're going to click the Save button to save and close this window. Now go all the way to the top and click the Profile tab. Filling out your profile is optional, but it's a great way to share something about yourself with other people on Skype, for example, your website or the city you live in. You can always fill out some information but leave other parts blank in order to protect your privacy. Why don't we start by uploading a picture? Just click Choose Picture from File and find the one you want on your computer. Now take a look at the column on the right. Here you can tell which items are going to be public, private, or visible to your contacts only. The ones with an arrow can even be changed. I'm going to leave this one the way it is, so only the people on my contacts list will be able to see my picture. Now let's scroll down to the rest of my profile and skip ahead so you can see what it'll look like when it's all filled out. There are actually two versions of my profile now, one for the public and one for my contacts. You can preview both versions here. See the difference? It has to do with the information you choose to fill out or leave blank and the controls you have the ability to change, like the one for your profile picture.
As you can see, managing your Skype account is easy once you know the secret to setting up your profile and customizing your privacy settings and notifications. Like what you just saw? Rate it. Add a comment. Subscribe to our channel. The freedom to learn. What you want, when you want. Absolutely free. GCF learnfree.org. Now that we're a little bit more familiar with Skype, I kind of want to go over some of the privacy settings that are available to you through the Skype's options, which you were seeing that you saw in the other interactive. So under your Skype options, you have your privacy settings right here. So um, in that section, allowing calls, this is your call setting. This controls who's allowed to call you in Skype. Um, if you don't want to receive calls from people you don't know, you can choose people in my contact list only. Um, and here you can see that that's what they've done. By clicking on anyone, you're going to be able to get calls from anyone who's on Skype. Then you've got your video settings. This controls who's allowed to send you video and screen sharing on Skype. If you don't want to receive webcam footage from people you don't know, then you would want to choose people in my contacts list only. And that's what they have um, selected. Uh, more video settings. This controls who's allowed to see that you have a webcam. If you want only your contacts to know you have a video, then you would choose people in my contacts list only. And that's how they have it. Um, allow IMs. This is your instant messaging setting. This controls who's allowed to chat with you on Skype using instant messenger. Um, to stop unwanted IMs from people you don't know, you would choose people in my contacts list only. And that's how they have that set up. Uh, the instant message history. Here you can control if and how long Skype should keep a history of your IM conversations. So here they've got it set at three months. You can also clear your history as well. Skype web settings. These settings allow you to manage your internet safety on Skype. The only box that has to stay checked is accept Skype browser cookies. Otherwise, some features may not work for you. You can uncheck the other boxes to keep from, one, showing your online status at Skype.com, and two, sharing your demographic information with third-party advisors, advertisers. So this is about your privacy settings. Um, you're going to want to make sure that you take full advantage of that and uh, get in there and check out what your settings are and get yourself set up the way that you want it to be set up. And again, that is in your Skype at the top and then and then into your options. Now we're going to talk about how to add, accept, and block contacts on Skype. So when it comes to adding contacts, who do you know on Skype? Maybe a friend or a family member? It's time to add them to your contacts. Adding contacts or importing them from services like Facebook or Outlook is the first step towards actually using Skype to call, chat, and video conference with people you care about. So to add a contact, first you're going to search for someone you know using a name, a Skype name, or an email address with the search bar. And that's that first picture there to the left. And then when you find the person you're looking for, you're going to click on Add to Contacts to send a contact request. So now if somebody has requested for you to be a contact um, on Skype, you can add contacts to your account and they add you to theirs via contact requests. When you receive a request, it's displayed as a notification above the contacts tab. Just click the notifications to open a pane where you can add, ignore, or block the person. And you can see that that's all boxed in there, that very bottom long picture there. Now, if you wanted to import contacts, you would click on your contacts on the menu bar, and then you would just choose import contacts. Uh, pick a service such as Facebook, Microsoft Outlook, enter the username and password. Don't worry, Skype does not keep any of this information. And then you would click import to see the list of search results. So if you need any help with uh, trying to add someone 
to um, your Skype, just get in contact with me. I would be more than happy to assist you with that. Um, and even in regards to blocking a contact, you can just press on that person. You can right click and you're going to get options. And one of those options is to block that person. So hopefully now you have a little bit better understanding of how you add a contact, how you block a contact, and how you can accept contact requests. Um, if you have any further assistance or have any questions about this, please get in contact with me. It really isn't that complicated. Why don't you go ahead right now and minimize it? Um, you could even look up some of your friends. I'm not sure if I have a Skype account. I, it's been a while, but if I do, you can look me up. Um, my name is Beth Gaff and see if I've got an account on there if, and you could, you could request for me to uh, join with you. Again, one-on-one -on -one appointments are always available for you and they're free. So we could sit down together or you even try to do something over Skype uh, to try to get the class um, a little bit better for you. Just like anything else, there's some safety tips for Skype that we should probably go over. It's important to know how to deal with unwanted callers on Skype as well as how to protect yourself from spam, phishing, and other scams. The first step to safety is adjusting your privacy settings so only the people you know can contact you. And I believe we covered that under the managing um, your account on Facebook. So we went over those privacy settings in that section. Again, we talked about blocking contacts. There are several reasons you may want to block um, someone on Skype. Perhaps the person is sending you spam or phishing for personal information like your bank account number. On the other hand, you may someday need to block someone you know for inappropriate behavior like cyber harassment. You can always block or ignore suspicious contact requests as soon as you receive them. You can also accept them if you think you might know them, then block them later if you change your mind. All you have to do is right click each name on the contacts tab and choose block this person from the list options. When you block someone on Skype, you can also report that person for abuse, which would be your spam, your phishing, phishing cyber harassment, um, if the situation warrants it. So um, just be thinking about that. Um, instant messaging for spam. The word spam is often used to refer to junk email or unwanted email advertisements. Unfortunately, you can receive spam in Skype too, in the form of instant messages from people you don't know. Phishing scams and malware can even be included in spam, so it's important to know what to do when you receive a suspicious message on Skype. Never reply or follow any links sent by a spammer. It can be tempting, but it will confirm to the spammer that you've read the message. Uh, the spammer may think you're a good target for more spam or the scams that are most harmful like ones involving your credit card or personal information. Block the user and report that individu individual for abuse. Um, that tells Skype to keep an eye out for, use, for this user's account. If Skype notices any suspicious activity, it can take action to protect other people from being spammed. Phishing and other scams. Many spammers aren't trying to sell you anything. They're trying to gain access to your information or even steal money from your bank account. Scams come in many different forms, but they generally work by promising you something that's too good to be true or by making you think something bad will happen if you don't take action. So as far as phishing, this is a type of scam where someone pretends to be from a bank or another trusted source to trick you into giving out your personal information. A phishing, a phishing message will often have a sense of urgency. So for example, it may claim that unauthorized charges were made on your credit card that you need to verify and that you need to verify your information. Never reply or follow any links sent by a scammer. Even on Skype, it's easy for someone to use the name and logo of a legitimate company in order to look official. Any link you click could take you to a very shady site. To visit only website you trust, type the web address yourself or use one of your bookmarks. Block the user and report the individual for abuse. This will tip off Skype 
to the scam so it can take action against the user's account. You can also contact the company being misrepresented, misrepresented and report the scam to someone there. Another option is to email a report to the Federal Trade Commission at spam at uce.gov. Get more information and learn about specific scams via the resources that um, they have out there for you. Some information refers specifically to email, but it can also apply to Skype. So some of those are onguardonline.gov and usa.gov. So this was tips to help you keep safe from spams, phishing, blocking users for um, sending you things you don't need. Um, so if you have any questions about this, make sure you get in contact with me. I think that uh, this is covered pretty well in this class, uh, but if you aren't 100% sure, I'd rather you check with me than just assume that it's something else. So go ahead right now and just kind of just kind of absorb all this in and think about your safety and how spam's going to affect you and how that phishing could affect you as well. Goodwill Community Foundation, creating opportunities for a better life. Now that you have Skype set up on your computer, it's time to make your first call. For some, this is what Skype's all about. I've already added a few friends and family to my contacts list. It looks like everyone's online, too, except for Brian and Ruben, whose online status is set to away. You can tell by the icon next to his name. Let's review exactly what you need before your first call on Skype. To start, make sure you're connected to the Internet, your volume is turned up, and your speakers and microphone are plugged in if they're not built into your computer. I also recommend making a test call using the Echo Sound Test service on your contacts list. Here's how it works. Just click the contact, and their information opens in a pane on the right. This is actually how you call anyone on Skype. To begin the test call, click the Call button. The call window will open and an automated service, in other words, a recording, will walk you through testing your equipment. Just follow the operator's instructions and visit Skype.com for help if you have any technical difficulty. Now the test call is over and I know my equipment is working. To let my friends know I'm online and available, I'm just going to set my status to online and then call someone. How about Steven? Again, to call any one of your contacts, just click them on your contacts list. Then come over here to their information and click the call button. The phone will ring until they answer. Hello? Hey, Stephen. How's New York? Great. How's the Skype tutorial going? Remember, calls to other people on Skype are free, so you can talk as long as you want. When you're done, click the End Call button near the bottom of the window. Answering calls is just as easy. Here's what it looks like when someone calls you. To pick up, use the Answer button, or decline if you're too busy to talk or don't recognize who's calling. You can also answer with video using your webcam. You'll learn more about that in our next video, titled Making Video Calls with Skype. There's one more type of call you can make for free on Skype, a group call with up to 25 people. Group calls are great for bringing family and friends together or for conference calls at work. Skype gives you two ways to set one up. The first is by clicking the Group button above your contacts list. An empty group will open on the right, where you can either drag and drop the people you want to call, or click the Plus button, then choose Add People to add them manually. Just click a name, then the Select button, and Add when you're done. Now I have two people in my group. When you're ready to begin, click the Call Group button. Hey, everybody. Hey, Elizabeth. How are you guys? Wow, this is really cool. The second way to make a group call is to add people while the call is already in progress. Just click the plus button, then choose Add People to this call. Now you can select the people you want to bring into the group. When you're done, click Add to Call, and then just wait for them to answer. Hello? 
Hey, Stephen. Mia and Elizabeth are on the call, too. Once again, click the End Call button when you're done. And before I do anything else, I'm going to save this group to my contacts and give it a name so I can easily call this group of people again. Now you know how to call people for free on Skype, both one-on-one -on -one and in a group. Goodwill Community Foundation, creating opportunities for a better life. Skype's video calling feature gives you the ability to talk to anyone you want face-to-face. -face. All you need is a webcam. Many new computers, like the laptop I'm using, even come with one built in. Before your first video call, it's a good idea to test your webcam to make sure the person on the other end will be able to see you. All you have to do is go to Tools, then choose Options. Now click Video Settings, and you should see yourself on the right. Hi there. This is actual footage from my webcam. Everything looks good, including the picture quality, the position of the webcam, even the lighting in the room. If your webcam isn't working, it'll look something like this. For help, try visiting these links. Skype's Guide to Setting Up a Webcam or the FAQ section would be a good place to start. Now that I know my webcam is working, I'm ready to make my first video call. If you've used Skype before, this part should be familiar to you. Just click someone on your contacts list, how about Elizabeth? Then look to their information on the right. Click the video call button, and the window will open with your webcam footage at the bottom. Now when Elizabeth answers, we'll see her footage too, as long as she also has a webcam. Oh, hey Bronwyn. Hey Elizabeth. Long time no see. You can also turn your webcam on or off during a call using the video button here. Elizabeth, why don't you try turning yours off so we can see what that looks like. Okay. As usual, when you're done, click the End Call button to hang up. Answering video calls is just as easy. Here's how it works. When you get an incoming call, click the Answer with Video button or decline if you're too busy to talk or don't know the caller. You can also answer without video by clicking the regular answer button so the other person won't be able to see you on your webcam. There's one more thing you can do with video on Skype, and that's group video calling with up to 10 people at a time. All you need is a Skype premium subscription or a day pass if you just want to try it out. To learn more, visit your account at skype.com and click the group video link. The great thing about this feature is that only one person in the group needs it, in this example, me. The rest of my friends and family will be able to join in for free. Skype gives you two ways to set up a group video call. The first is by creating a group or opening an existing one. Here's one I already have saved to my contacts. It includes my friends Elizabeth and Jessica. To begin, click the video call button. Now all we have to do is wait for them to answer. Hey guys, say hello to the camera. Hey Bronwyn. The second way to make a group video call is to add people while the call is in progress. Just click the plus button here and you'll be able to add as many people as you want. Now you know how to make video calls on Skype, both one-on-one -on -one and in a group. Everybody say goodbye. Bye. Bye. Are you ready to chat? On Skype Instant Messaging, also known as IM, lets you send short messages to your contacts so you can chat back and forth in real time. IM is a great alternative to regular Skype calls and even email. If you want to ask someone a quick question or simply have a relaxed conversation without picking up the phone. So to IM someone, you're going to click on the person you want to IM on your contacts tab. The contacts information will open in a pane on the right and then you're going to type your message inside the conversation box and you can see it there. Click send and you're done. Press enter on your keyboard. Enter or send either way and you're done. It's sent. 
The other person will receive the message and can reply reply online if the if they're online. Um, if the contact is offline, he or she will receive the message after signing in. So this, um, you can reply to a comment, and they have that listed there as well. Somebody is messaging you, you would just reply it, hit enter, or hit send. You can also IM during a call. This can be useful if you want to send a phone number, link, or anything else you would normally write down. All you have to do is click the show IM button on the call window and type your message. So if you're receiving IMs or instant messages from someone, um, sometimes a pop-up, but more often a notification on your computer's taskbar will come up to let you know. To view or reply to the IM, you would open your Skype window, then go to the Recent tab, or click on the person who sent you the IM on the Contacts tab. Both areas will be marked to let you know you have a message waiting, and the same thing happens if you receive an IM while you're offline. So this was talking to you about how to instant message. Very simple, not hard at all. Um, go ahead right now since you've got your account created and everything and get on there and see if you can figure out how to send a message through Skype. For some, keeping in touch with friends and family on Skype is almost as good as being there in person. In this video, I'd like to show you two more ways to interact by sharing your screen and sending files. For example, I'd like to help my Aunt Regina with a question she has about her computer. Rather than telling her how, I can show her by sharing live video of what's on my computer screen. All you have to do is click the plus button at the bottom of the call window. Next, choose Share Screens, then click Start when you're ready. Now Regina can see exactly what I see, including my desktop, the icons down here on the taskbar, even my mouse. That makes it easy to demonstrate things, like how to change your background, or maybe I could just show her something I'm working on. Here's what it looks like from Regina's point of view. When you're ready to stop, click the Stop Sharing button at the top of the screen, and Skype will take you back to the call window. The next thing I'd like to show you is how to send files to your contacts. This is a great way to share photos, PDF files, basically anything that you have saved to your computer. I have a Word document that I want to send to Stephen. It's for a project we're working on. With his information open on the right, I'm just going to click the plus button, then Send File. Now choose the file you want. To select more than one, press and hold Control on your keyboard while you click. When you're ready, click Open. And Skype begins sending the files right away. You can watch their progress here. You can also send files during a call. Just click the plus button in the call window, then Send File, and follow the same steps. Let's skip ahead a couple hours. Now Stephen has sent me a file. I can tell by the notification on the Recent tab and the mark next to his name. You can click either place to open his information on the right, and then Save the file, or Cancel to reject it. I'm going to go ahead and click Save As because I trust Stephen and the file is something I was expecting. As you can see from this warning, files sent to you on Skype can contain viruses and other malware, so it's important to be careful. Never open files from people you don't know. Click OK to continue, and choose where you want to save the file. I'm going to save this one to my desktop. Finally, click the Save button, and once it's finished downloading, the file itself will appear in your history. If you want to open it right away, you can even click the Open File button. Now you know how to share with your contacts on Skype, including sending and receiving files and sharing your screen. While it's not very likely, it's important to note that the files sent to you over Skype could contain viruses or other malware. This is why it's important to be careful when opening files and always follow these precautions. Don't open any files you weren't expecting. 
even if the file looks like it's from someone you know, you may have um, it may have been sent to you automatically by a virus. This is how many viruses spread. If a contact sends you a file that seems suspicious, you should call or I am that person to verify that it was meant for you. Keep your antivirus software update, updated. Uh, viruses can spread quickly, and if your viruses, uh, virus software isn't up to date, it may not be able to block new viruses. Keep your computer's firewall on. Firewall software helps to prevent people or malware from gaining access to your computer through the internet. So those are very, very important tips. Don't open any files you weren't expecting. Keep your antivirus software updated and keep your computer's firewall on, firewall on as well as any other kind of defender blocker that you might have. We're going to talk about some communication tips. Now that you know how to, how to make a voice call and a video call on Skype, Learn how to avoid common communication problems like poor audio quality, webcam mishaps, and other technical issues. So we're going to follow these tips and keep them in mind every time you use Skype. Finding the right spot. Before you sit down to make a call, think about your surroundings. Is there a lot of background noise? Are there people nearby who might overhear you? This is especially important if you like to use Skype from your laptop or mobile device. Here's some advice to help you find the right location. For voice calls, choose a quiet spot without a lot of background noise. If you're at home or work, watch out for things like the TV, other people talking or moving around, or construction noise outside. If you're in public, avoid busy places like your local coffee shop unless you have a headset with a microphone. For video calls, also choose a quiet spot that, rel that is relatively private. A room in your house or a place at the office would be ideal. Make sure it's well lit so that the other person can see you and be cautious of what else might be caught on camera. For example, you may want to tidy up first or pick a different location if the room is messy or if it contains anything you don't want other people to see. Making a call. Have you ever been on the phone in which the other person sounded far away? How about a video call where the webcam appeared to be shaking? These are common problems that usually come down to user error, not a technical issue. To make sure that the other person can see, hear, and clarify you, follow these steps. For voice calls, a headset is foolproof. But don't worry, you don't have you don't have one. If you don't have one, don't worry. If you have a separate microphone, all you have to do is place it in front of you and speak clearly into the mic. If you have a built-in microphone, find out where it is on your computer, sit close to it. Um, so the sound is quiet and not too far away. For video calls, follow the advice above. Then make sure your webcam is secure and pointing directly at you. This way it won't shake or accidentally leave, leave you out of the frame. Um, you should also be cautious of your eye contact as well as how to maintain it during important calls like a job interview. Instead of watching the screen, look up when it's your turn to talk and speak directly into the camera. Playing it safe. When you make calls on Skype, it's important to also keep safety and courtesy in mind. Even though you're most likely talking to people you trust, you can expose yourself and others in unexpected ways. For example, how would you feel if you were dancing in your living room, then realized your coworker was watching you on Skype? To avoid these mishaps, always keep these safety tips in mind. If someone walks into the room, let the person know you're on a call. Otherwise, he or she would say or do something disruptive or inappropriate without even realizing you're using Skype. This is especially important if you're on a video call. Not everyone is comfortable appearing on camera. If you're not conversing in a private space, also give the caller fair warning. Otherwise, the same risks apply. The person on the, on the other end is just as likely to say or do something in confidence, then regret it or become angry after finding out you're not alone. Be cautious, um, conscious of other people when using Skype in public. Be careful not to discuss personal information such as your address, bank account, or social security number. You never know who could be listening and you don't want information to be used for identity theft. Always hang up when you're done. It's the only way to prevent uh, the other people from seeing or hearing you later by accident, like when you're dancing in your living room, if you choose to leave the call engaged um, 
while you are doing something else, maybe during a study group, be especially mindful of your privacy. It's easy to forget the presence of other people when the person is not physically in the room. And solving technical issues. When you experience a technical problem on Skype, the best place to go for help is in its website and especially the support homepage. There you can choose a topic or, con or conduct a search related to your problem. For example, strange sound or why do I hear an echo? Topics from the support site that you can find in itself are installing and upgrading, connecting problems, sound problems, and video problems. So if you follow some of these communication tips, you're not going to have any problem and everything is going to work out really great for you when it comes to Skype. So make sure you find the right spot, understand your privacy when making a call, play it safe no matter where you are, and how you can solve technical issues. Hello and welcome to Skype for Android mobile phone. As well as all the features you already know and love, you can now make face-to-face -face video calls. It's really simple. You can call your contacts from Skype, or if you sync your Skype contacts with your phone, you can make a call straight from your contact book. Hello. Hello. So as well as talking face-to-face, -face, you can also switch to the camera on the back of your phone to show what's going on in the world around you. Like my ice cream here. Oh, that looks good. And you can make calls and send text to mobile phones and landlines at great Skype breaks. That's all from me. Bye. See ya. Of course, you can still make Skype to Skype calls to your friends on their laptops, mobile phones, or any other Skype friendly device they might be using. Skype for Android phones. Available now from the Android market. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If it wasn't for you, I would have no reason to have this class, so thank you for participating. Make sure you listen for that secret code that was in the class. Join my group today on Facebook, Tech Talk Technology. I do have a mobile lab here in our community, so um, if you're looking for a way to get some help and you can't always get to the library, get in contact with me, I could help you. Hey, take a deep breath, it's all over. You are, you are gonna be on Skype and you're gonna be a master of Skype no matter what. And don't forget that one-on-one -on -one appointments, if you're in my area, are free as well. So again, thank you for taking the time to take this class. Hopefully now you have a better understanding of Skype and hopefully you're already using it. Thanks again. I want to thank the following websites for their information and their images. Without these following websites for their information and their images, we would not have been able to have the class today. Thank you.